Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about one of those concepts in chemistry that can be pretty darn confusing, so if you need to pause the video, rewatch the video, or anything like that, definitely bring questions to class, all that good stuff. Um, but don't be, don't be surprised or discouraged if you don't get this the first to go around. So we're going to talk about this concept called the mole. And in order to attack this note guide in the right way, you're going to want to have out a periodic table because we will be looking at these numbers beneath each element. This is called the molar mass or the atomic mass, and we're going to be studying those a little bit today, so have a periodic table ready to go. But to really make sense of the mole, I'd like us to consider this reaction. So imagine if I asked this. Imagine if I said, I want you to make me 10 formula units of sodium chloride. Right, that's the goal. And so you know some things. You know that in order to do this correctly, you're going to need to balance your equation. So you're going to need one Cl2 molecule to make two NaCl's, and you're going to need two sodiums over here on the left to make that happen as well. And so with that logic, if I want to make 10 formula units of sodium chloride, I'm going to need 10 uh, ions, if you will, of sodium, and I am going to need five molecules of chlorine because five times two gives me my ten formula units. But here's the problem. These things are really, really, really small, and even if you had some pretty darn good tweezers, there's no way you're picking up just ten sodium atoms, right? Not possible. And same thing with five of these. There's just no way to do it. And so what you need to do instead of picking them up with tweezers is you need to weigh them. But there's another problem we can't weigh a single atom. We don't have any balances in our lab that can do that. In fact, nowhere in the world could you find a balance that can measure the mass of a single atom. They're just too darn light. And so what do we do? Well, we group these things together. Instead of weighing out a single sodium atom, we're gonna weigh out a whole big group of sodium atoms. And that group has a name, and we call that group one mole of sodium. And mole has a pretty useless abbreviation. It gets abbreviated to MOL. Right, so almost one and the same. And that mole has a number, right? So a mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power, so this is a huge number, of whatever we're talking about, right? So if we are talking about a mole of sodium, let me just plug that in here, one mole of sodium, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atoms. If it were the chlorine, I would say that one mole of chlorine, Cl2, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power chlorine molecules. It's diatomic, so this is a molecule. And imagine, oh, excuse me, imagine if we were dealing with a sodium chloride, right? If I had one mole of sodium chloride, NaCl, that would similarly be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power of sodium chloride formula units, right? And so that mole descriptor matches up with the number we know that one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. One mole of chlorine is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. One mole of NaCl is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. So we are using this term mole much in the same way as we use the term one dozen. So if I had one dozen NaCl, I would have 12 sodium chloride formula units, right? And if I had one dozen apples, I would have 12 apples. And if I had one mole of apples, you guessed it, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power apples, right? So this term mole is just a term that describes a number. Now it happens to be a really, really big number. So why is that such a darn big number? Well, that is such a big number because atoms are so darn small. So 
somewhere along the line, someone said, well, let's, let's equate this to an actual element, and they selected carbon-12, right? And it, we know something about carbon-12, so let me just draw out carbon-12 up here for a second. We know that carbon-12 has 12 things in the nucleus. It has an atomic number of six, so this means that it has 12 protons plus neutrons. And remember, in terms of AMUs, this should equal, if we have 12 protons plus neutrons, every one of those is one AMU, this should equal a grand total of 12 AMUs. So someone along the line said, hey, we should figure out this idea of a mole, and we should make it match up to that number, right? So wouldn't it make sense, wouldn't it be really nice, if this 12 AMUs, if we actually converted it into something in, in real life, would weigh 12 grams, right? And that's what they did. So they figured out how many atoms would be in a 12 gram sample of carbon 12, All right? So a 12 gram sample of carbon 12, guess how many atoms are in that? Well, it's that number we've been talking about all along. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon in 12 grams of carbon-12. And in fact, those numbers on the periodic table, those represent the mass of that number of that particular atom. So this iron, that 55.845, that mass represents the mass of one mole of iron, also known as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, so let's just recap this because this is one of those really kind of convoluted um, concepts that we should discuss. So we've said that atoms are too small for us to just physically pick up. They weigh too little for us to actually just weigh a single one of them. So what we're going to do is weigh a big group of them. We call that group something special. We call that group this word mole, but mole really is just a word that describes a number. In this case, it's this really, really big number. Why is it so big? Because atoms are so small. Where did that number come from? Well, it came from over here. It is the number of atoms in a 12-gram sample of carbon-12 so that we can make the mass match the number that we know for the atom. Okay, so let's get ourselves some practice back on your note guide. <clears throat> what we are going to do is see if we can look at some various um, compounds, and we're going to figure out not just how many atoms of each one there are, but imagine if I had a one mole sample, right? So I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of each one of these. We're going to do some work on these. So we're going to say in mercury 1 sulfate, and I've shown you what these compounds are based on their charges crossing, right? What is, what is really in there? Well, what we have is actually one mole of the Hg2 plus 2 ion, right? And it's sneaky because it's got that 2 there. So we've got one mole of mercury 1. We also have one mole of the sulfate ion, SO4, with a minus two charge. And remember, that's assuming that we have one mole of this stuff, of this Hg2SO4. So said another way, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of this compound. In there, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of this ion, and I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of this ion. Hey, and by the way, I could take that a step further. I could say that within that mole I actually of sulfate, I actually have one mole of sulfur and four moles of oxygen. And if you're saying to yourself, wait a second, this seems really, really simple, right? Because I could have done the following. I could have said in just one of these, in one Hg2SO4, I have one Hg2 plus 2, that's true, I have 1s, and I have 4 o's. And that is all true, right? What we're doing is just expanding that by a power of, or by a multiple of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power, because that'll become really useful to us down the line to be talking in these bundles of atoms as opposed to individual atoms, because remember, we can't weigh or pick up an individual atom. Let's do the same thing with calcium sulfide. So for calcium sulfide, we would say that calcium sulfide is made up of one 
calcium, and it's made up of one sulfur. But if I had one mole of calcium sulfide, I would say that I have one mole of calcium, and I would say that I have one mole of sulfide. And of course, these have charges, right? They're ions. Another ionic compound coming over here, cobaltus nitrate. So cobaltus nitrate, imagine that I had one mole of that cobaltus nitrate. That would mean that I had one mole of the cobaltus ion, which is CO plus two. I would have two moles of the nitrate ion, right, that two outside of it, so two moles of NO3 minus one. But in that NO3 minus one, don't I have one mole of nitrogen and three moles of oxygen. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Why don't you pause the video, try the next three on your own, and then we'll reconvene for molar masses. So if you pause the video, let's chat about these last three. We have in one mole of KClO3, we have one mole of potassium, which is K plus one, we have one mole of the chlorate ion, ClO3 minus one. But in chlorate, we have one mole of chlorine, and we have three moles of oxygen. In barium nitrate, BANO32, we have, let me just fill in that we're dealing with one mole of this. In one mole of that, we would have one mole of barium, Ba plus two. We would have two moles of nitrate, NO3 minus one. But in that nitrate, we have one mole of N, and we have three moles of O. And finally, in barium hydroxide, if I had one mole of this, I would have one mole of barium ions, Ba plus two, and I would have two moles of the hydroxide ion, so two moles of OH minus one, but that hydroxide ion is actually made up of one mole of oxygen and one mole of hydrogen. Okay, so hopefully you have kind of a sense that we can expand just the numbers of each type of atom out to, um, out to additionally the number of moles of each one of them. Now in the bottom three, we also want to figure out how heavy they are. So we've gone through and we've identified the, um, the number of moles and the number of atoms in each one of these things. But what I'm going to do for each one of these is erase what I have in blue and green, and we're going to figure out how heavy this one mole of potassium chlorate really is based on the periodic table. So again, if you want this information, feel free to have it. Let me just erase it here. Let's go through on the periodic table and let's do ourselves a little bit of math. So on your periodic table, have that in front of you. You're going to notice that potassium has a number beneath it, and the number is 39.0983. Now the convention with molar mass is always to round to the hundredths place, so two after the decimal point. So we're gonna go through, and we're gonna say that in our KClO3, we have one potassium. In fact, I'm gonna do it this way. Potassium, there's one of them. And I'm gonna multiply that one potassium times its molar mass, which is 39.10, once I round to the hundredths place. So that equals 39. 0 0.10. There's one chlorine. Chlorine has a mass of 35.45 on the periodic table. 1 times 35.45 is, no surprise, 35.45. And even though these are multiplied by 1, we want you to show this math so you can see your thought process. We have three oxygens. Oxygen has a mass of 16.00. So that gives you a total mass of 48.00 coming from the oxygens. And so if you do that math, if you add all of those up, you will end up with 122.55. So 122.55. But what is that? That is the number of grams 
that's how heavy it is, in one mole of that KClO3. So said another way, 122.5 grams per mole. So if you had a bundle of atoms, if you had a bundle of this KClO3 stuff, and you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of that stuff, it would weigh that much. Because if you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd potassiums, it would weigh that much. If you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd chlorines, it would weigh that much. And if you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygens times three of them, it would weigh that much. Okay, let's try that again for barium nitrate. Again, I'm going to get rid of what we had before, although we'll still use these numbers in the molar mass. We are going to do some math for barium nitrate. So in barium nitrate, there is one barium. Barium has a mass of 137.33 grams per mole. So 1 times 137.33 is still 137.33. There are two nitrogens in barium, right, because that 2 expands through the parentheses. Right? So we have two nitrogens. Nitrogen has a molar mass of 14.01. Do that math, you'll get 28.02. And there are oxygens, but now there are six oxygens. So oxygen still has a mass of 16.00 times six gives us 96.00 as our molar mass coming from oxygen. So if you add all of that together, you should get 261.35. But 261.35 what? Well, grams in every one mole of this barium nitrate. And finally, over here on the right, barium hydroxide. Let's again erase what we had before, give ourselves some room to work. In your barium hydroxide, you have one barium. Barium, we said, has a mass of 137.33. Again, if you're wondering where the heck those masses are coming from, they're just straight off the periodic table, bottom number on the periodic table. Oxygen, there are two of those, has a mass of 16.00, so that gives us 32.00. And hydrogen, there are two of those, each one weighs 1.01, so that's a mass of 2.02. .02. And if you add it all together, you'll get 171.35. And again, what is that? That's the number of grams in one mole of this barium hydroxide. So again, take home message from today, there's this unit we call a mole that allows us to measure things in chemistry a lot more easily. It has a really big magnitude. It has a magnitude that is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. So it's a really, really large number. And we can also figure out how heavy one mole of any sample is based on those bottom numbers on the periodic table.